I just had to have special edition, didn't I? Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mini Ninjas, and I would like to welcome you back to my Double Dragon Neon playthrough, which I'm playing through on Double Dragon difficulty, otherwise known as the hardest difficulty. To recap from previous episodes, Young Billy is still chasing after the kidnapper of his girlfriend Marion, who happens to be Skull again, who may or may not sound like a certain villain from the Masters in the Universe cartoon series. We now join Billy in Mission 4, otherwise known as the Airlock, where yes, we are still in space, we have still yet to get a call back from the Battletoads, and we still have a mess to clean up on our own here. Go team space. If I were you, Billy, I'd stay away from those back doors. They operate in the same fashion as the helicopter doors back during your Double Dragon 2 misadventure. On the plus side, at least this time around with these suction doors, you have controls that don't reverse depending on the direction you happen to be looking at, which is probably one of my few pet peeves regarding that title. Also, it is much easier to knock people out of the suction doors this time around, which also helps, especially in the later segments that have this particular theme repeat themselves. For those wondering, on easier difficulties, it's actually possible to survive being sucked into the void, as long as you're not an opponent anyway, in which case it's instant death for you, no matter who you or what you are. To those watching this video, please do not follow Billy's advice, because quite frankly, it wouldn't help much in the vacuum of space. However, since it is a video game, we shall suspend this belief at this time. And this, ladies and gentlemen, could have gone better, but at least it's not fatal. Well, it's not fatal anyway, as long as your name isn't Williams, in which case it ends badly for you. Did that William just commit suicide? Yes, yes he did. Hmm, huh. I would have not guessed that the fan would have actually been able to bounce off one foe and continue hitting the next foe in line. Just to mention this ahead of time, the lenders that happen to have military marks on them are often carrying grenades on them. This will become very important short. Just to say this up front, that key which I happen to be seeing over there actually corresponds to a locked chest on the other side of this airlock room which I'll be entering in a second. But mind you, there's nothing important in that particular chest, so therefore, I'm just going to skip the key this time around. I've already done it once, and that was once enough. Well, what do you do? I stand corrected, there's actually more than one version of Linda that has grenades on them. Still, you'll primarily see them on the ones with the military insignias on Thank you, vacuum in space. You can see why I made special note of the letters with the grenades. In this particular room, because there will be quite a few of them, there's a good chance you can actually use them to toss the grenades out and let the vacuum space drag the grenades far enough away from you, while bringing it right back in front of them to blow them up and save you a bit of work. Admittingly, it is a bit of a cheesy way out of this particular scenario, but if you happen to be in low health like I currently am, anything helps. those of us thinking that we haven't jumped shark up enough in this particular time just yet, please welcome the bonus beast known as the tapeworm. A large space object, which you can pretty much beat up in order to get extra items such as an extra cash or mixtape including some that would not normally be available at this point of the game. Just so you know, yes, the tapeworm does make multiple more appearances throughout the title, and whenever he shows up, it's pretty much a good time in order to just start Mashing away at the punching button, 
in order to get some extra cash, some health power-ups since he actually does drop those now that I think about it, as well as a good way to get a few easy mixtapes that you don't have to beat a specific foes for, or shell out quite a bit of cash at in any of the curio shops or shopkeepers. Just one moment, ladies and gentlemen, just leave this back one more Williams in order to get past this section where I pretty much left myself with almost no health to work with. Hopefully there will be some sort of power-up in order to help fix the health situation, and there we go. Suddenly we're back at full health again, ladies and gentlemen. And for those that happen to scroll far enough to the right in this particular part of the stage, an extra one-up that can easily be overlooked. And just to get proof of counts by the way, they also start to introduce booby traps at this point in the game. Oh look, yet an extra one-up. Why might the game be willing to give so many one-ups at this particular point? Because this particular part of the airlock stage is actually quite difficult. As you can probably tell, the airlock itself will stay open for much longer than previous entries, and you're going to be bombarded with quite a few extra enemies, including some abobos at the later point of this particular sequence. So yes, you will probably need those one-ups the first time around. Actually, now that I think about it, worth mentioning at this point, while the air lock is a particularly good way in order to get rid of the lesser foes, stronger foes such as the Bobo can actually survive being by the airlock for more than one second, in which case it will damage them, but it will require a more than one session in order to get them to actually suck out of there properly, unless you happen to beat them down a bit first. And there's your proof of concept right there. Despite having punched and kicked the Oboa quite a bit of during that particular setup, he still managed to avoid being sent into space. However, second time around, a little more successful. And with that last vacuum of space section out of the way, we now proceed to what will actually be the final part of this particular stage, leading up into the boss room. And I actually don't have enough special in order to pull this off. What? They've oh, already next time. This far? You've got to be Deploy the mandroid! One second, there's something here that seems very familiar. Alright, proof of concept. Yeah, I just knew it. Please welcome our friend here, the Mecha Biker, who himself is kind of an homage to the Mega Man series, with particular emphasis on the classic as well as the X series. This particular fight is kind of a two-parter here. The first part begins with you fighting him while he's still mounted on his bike, which as you can see what just happened there, after a little bit it will actually stall, which gives you an opportunity for a few free hits. Otherwise, you can actually hit him by dive kicking him while he's in mid dash, which will slow him down just enough to get him an extra hit or two. This particular pattern needs to be repeated until eventually the ride blows up and you can fight him in the second hole. And that uh, is the ride. And now we begin the second phase of this fight. Where in this case, you will actually begin adopting several classic Mega Man style moves, which you can see include that nice little slide kick, a triple cannon shot, a little hop around, and although not a thing when he doesn't show up in this particular fight, he also has a charge shot, where basically he'll stand around, charging his blaster there, firing off a large blast, which if it actually does manage to you, will do a substantial amount of damage at this particular point. I honestly have to say that this fight is actually easier than the first boss battle with Skull again, mostly because the back here 
he doesn't have anything which will gain a lot of damage in one hit, except for that one charge shot, which is very easy to dodge. And aside from having a lot of health, which only now has he begun to smoke, yeah, he's really not much of a threat. And he even blows up in a classic Mega Man fashion. Nice show. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Mission 4 of Double Dragon Neon on the Double Dragon difficulty. I didn't know he was a load-bearing robot! Better get on that bike! Hmm, this ship has seen better days. Alright then, ladies and gentlemen, join me next time for Mission 5, where we'll actually be back on Terra Firma.